Hey guys, Clumsy here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Finally, we have some nice weather outside. Uh, weather here in currently in Georgia, in a different airport, quite near to Asheville, our home base. But everywhere in this vicinity, no clouds and perfect weather. So I decided to go a bit different today. We'll do a VFR flight, but we will still be using VATSIM. So we'll try to get some VFR flight following. We'll try to stay in with the big boys and the frequency and we'll hear some real people communicating and interacting with our virtual air traffic controllers, right? Anyway, so the flight plan for today, we are currently in Heaven's Landing. This might sound familiar for some of you. If you watch Steve Okinivo, I think he has a video where they departed or arrived or both in Heaven's Landing. Looks to be a very premier, very luxurious area with its own airfield in here. So I, I did a job in on air and it landed us there. And so now we're taking the trip back, going past Asheville Regional, our home base, and then going past to Hickory Regional right here. And we'll do it VFR for the most part. Now, the nice thing about little nav map that I really enjoy is you can show all the air spaces so if you're flying vfr you can actually see oh this is class e from this uh, altitude to that altitude class e it's also based on the colors but then you get different colors here this one near asheville you would actually see it's class c class charlie with class e you can fly vfr no problem no need to interact with atc at all no uh, requirement to do so as long as it's class echo but if you enter the class delta class charlie class bravo then you need to interact so this entire flight plan that we have currently is actually vfr for the most part except when we get to the airport itself because the airport has an airspace class delta airspace uh, from uh, ground until 3700 feet so that's the only time we need to interact strictly speaking but i'd like to also get vfr flight following if possible so we'll see but we'll do that on the air okay one more thing i like about little nav map is it supports different kinds of maps and there was someone i, I, I linked it in the mods list in the video description who came up with a map for the entire vfr charts for the us so you can actually overlay that and you can do proper vfr flying here in the us with the like this is like for flight close as close as possible right so you see the borders all the possible um obstacles all the air spaces and all the different frequencies as well so you can simulate it as close as you like this is the power of little nav map now it is quite uh, complex in the beginning and um there's a steep learning curve, but I think all in all, at the end of the day, once you get used to it, just just stay with it and uh, you won't regret it. All right? Anyway, let's go and start up. I think I've delayed it long enough. All right. So we are in the Bonanza still. This is post patch 4. So we are now in patch 1.9.5.0. Let me double check that on air is there. Oh yeah, I haven't set that up yet. So Kilo Hotel Kilo Yankee Hickory Regional. And we have what kind of cargo is this? 388 pounds of cargo. Some foodstuffs, I guess. Logistics. Okay. And later on, as we request for flight following, I actually prepared my script already because I can never remember all that stuff. So I'll show you what I do. And I think this will help a lot of the newcomers as well, including me. And you guys told me about this. Prepare a script. So I actually have a script here. Let me minimize that. So this is my script. I'll first contact center. And then when they respond, I will request for flight following by giving these information, which is quite nice. So I don't have to fumble around and uh, think of what to say on the spot. 
I have a guide and it makes things so much easier. Will make me less nervous, hopefully. Alright, anyway, so um, new from patch 1950, if I turn on the engine, even for the first time, the batteries rather, you see there is actually the boot up sequence now kicking in. Before, that boot up sequence only kicked in after your second boot up. So that's basically turning on the batteries and then turning it off and then turning it on again. <clears throat> so that is the only main thing I noticed that changed with this patch. Well, aside from that, the the critical issues I think have been fixed already. The crash to desktop with the VFR map and all that stuff. And the phantom issues they say is gone. So I hope that is really the case. Cowl flaps can go off. Mixture full. Propeller high RPM and then throttle full open. Then let's Your turn flight on the will fuel be monitored pump. until you land and shut down the engines. Half an inch open and now we can start the engine. Clear prop. Looking good right here. Okay. RPM around a thousand. Now we can turn on the avionics. 19 degrees outside. Pretty cold. Express B here. So yeah, you see the boot up sequence there on the MFD. And then you have to click on this soft key right here so that it continues. Very realistic. I like it. So that's our flight plan. Very simple. Very chill. Alright. So now let's press B. That's the current altimeter setting here. I'm using live weather. Default live weather. Okay. <clears throat> that looks good so far. Uh huh. So what we can do now, let me fix the trim as well. Up three for the takeoff trim. And we should be ready to go. So let me connect to VATSIM on my other screen here. And then maybe I'll show you. So connected to the voice server. I see Atlanta Center is there. Let's tune in to get some excitement, right? Um, what is CLE Cleveland? Wow, so many people. All right, but yeah, Atlanta Center is probably what we want. Unicom and Atlanta Center. 132.975. So let's set that up here. And then 122.8 for Unicom frequency. That's what we'll be using as we depart this airport. Just double check that it is there. Yeah, just no one is speaking at the moment, I think. Let's leave it there for now. Let me file a flight plan. Now, this is important. They say even if you're flying VFR, you have to file a flight plan so that they will know, ETC will know that you're Allegiant not 938. Did you have a breaking any rules. So let's go GE99. Uh, standby 938. Kilo Hotel, Kilo Yankee is where we're going. Alternate would probably be Asheville itself. Uh, departure time would be what time is it right now in Zulu? Uh, 045 Zulu, let's say. Collegiate 938, we can take the ILS to runway 20. 150. Cruising altitude would be 11,000. Or actually, American 815, Atlanta Center, radar contact, uh, turn right, direct bar, me and able climb in same level for Because zero. we're doing VFR, we should have a 500 feet in there, so let's put it 9,500. And the uh, American Air Correctional Legion 938, we Beginner, daytime, uh, FS2020 avionics, we need to say Air that. So that they know that we won't have perfect um, <laughs> G1000, perfect avionics with us. Okay, file that. And now that's been filed, so we are good to go. Let's switch to CTAF here. And we'll announce. I don't think anyone else is here. There's no players in the vicinity, but let's just be extra sure. So let's turn on the lights. Everything looks good there. Alright, parking brake is released. 
Let's turn right sharply and I'll announce what runway is it? Runway 05. Heaven's Landing traffic, Bonanza 1, Charlie Lima, departing, well, taxiing runway 5 via Alpha. Heaven's traffic. I'm actually not sure if this is Alpha taxiway, but I don't think <laughs> with this kind of airport, looks like just an airstrip. Probably don't even have names for the taxiway. Right, so this is just straight ahead. Looks very isolated. Looks very private. I can imagine some of the rich guys coming here. What can you do here actually? Has anyone been here before? We do actually have some planes as well, as you can see in front of us. But that is more of an AI ground plane. I don't think that guy will ever, ever like take off or anything. Because I have traffic turned off, both multiplayer and uh, AI planes. No live traffic, no nothing. But I do have ground traffic. So I think that's what that is, just to add a little bit more life in the airport. Did I just snag his wing? I hope not. <laughs> okay. I'm not missing anything. Okay, let's turn on our landing lights, nav, strobe, should be okay. Right, let's announce. Heaven's Landing traffic, Bonanza 1, Charlie Lima departing, runway 5 straight out, Heaven's traffic. Is this the runway? This is the runway, almost missed it. Goodness. Right, let's do this guys. And let me put my altitude to 9,500. Altitude selected. Well, pressure, all temperature in the green. No winds, keeping center line. Airspeed's alive, waiting for 73 knots. And we pitch up ever so slightly. Little by little. There you go. Airborne time lock. Pause the brake, gear up, tap the brakes first. Off we go. Now, what I'm not sure is what you say when you've left the airport, the traffic. You just say something like, left the area? <laughs> let's, let's do that just for additional info. Heaven's Landing traffic, Bonanza 1, Charlie Lima, leaving the area to the northeast. Heaven's Landing traffic. Okay. So let's get ourselves settled. Wow, oh, this is beautiful here. This is why I took this flight, guys. And yeah, I think this is the perfect time to go VFR. We have daytime, 8 a.m. in the sim. We have all the visibility we can ask for. And yeah, it's a perfect day for VFR flying. Very different from past couple of days when there is almost no visibility <laughs> in the airports that we were flying at. All right, let me just zoom out. Let's get ourselves settled here before I contact uh, center, but let's switch though. So we get a bit of radio uh, communications. I might need to cut this episode, guys. Thank you for the feedback, by the way, and thank you for all the amazing comments. Glad you guys are loving the series. A lot of you were saying, actually, most of you who commented, actually all of you who commented, were saying that you wanted to keep everything in there. Uh, you didn't Delta want to- didn't want to remove any of the radio communications um, but maybe this time I will have to because it's going to be a long flight at least the cruise will be quite long so we'll maybe have to double check that all right but uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes okay 
Okay, I think I'm more or less settled. I can turn off the landing lights. We are far above a thousand feet above ground. Cowl flaps remain open. Uh, mixture. Let me lean this properly. Just maybe 20 degrees below the lean of peak. So we get that maximum Not performance without taxing the engine too much. 938, maintain 1,500. So 877, 878, let's go 850 here. Yeah, down to 1,500, Good. Alright. So let me go. Let's check uh, flight level change mode, nav mode. And then let's wait for that magenta line to... That, ma that flight director to match up so the plane wouldn't shutter too much. And then let's go autopilot here. There you go. And that would give us minimal impact. Right, looking good. Everything is fine. Right, now let me get myself prepared for contacting center. Right, I'm looking at my script here. Y you guys want I show you the script? Okay. So you, you see what's happening behind the scenes. Right, that's contact center. It looks like it's not too busy. That's good. Atlanta Center, good day. Uh, Bonanza 361 Charlie Lima with request. Bonanza 361 Charlie Lima is a Bonanza G36 Type Bravo Echo 36 At 6,500 climbing 9,500 Around 5 miles from uh, Heaven's Landing uh, Golf Echo 9er uh, Request flight following to Hickory Regional Kilo Hotel Kilo Yankee Number 361 Troy Lima, radar contact, uh, reset transform squad 206. Squawk 2060, uh, 361 Charlie Lima. I think that's it. Do you guys know what that weird clicking sound is? I've always been having that every couple of minutes. I actually get that even outside. <clears throat> In the... Um, what do you say? I actually get that even in the main menu and I could not figure out what it is. I don't think it does anything negative so far But yeah, it is pretty I'm getting pretty pirate. It does seem like like a phantom issue But without the side effect, so <laughs> I'm not so sure it is pretty scary All right uh, I think that's good. Actually, my mistake there is before I did all of this, I should have... Look at this. Position from airport. Yeah. Um, if I look at this, I said I was around 5 miles. I just eyeballed that. I had no idea really how far I was. So to be more accurate in little nav map, you can do like a right click on any part of the map. And then you can measure the distance. I think in four flight they can also do this. So you can do that one. Five miles is actually over here, near this mountain, which is not too bad. I guess we called around this part, so it was around five miles. So I got lucky then. But ideally speaking, I should measure that first before I get in touch with air traffic control. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's much activity right now. If you look at the map here in Vatastic.com, amazing site. You can see a lot of coverage. Atlanta Center, this is where we are. That's that's us. November 361 Charlie Lima. And uh, we are making our way to here, Hickory Regional. So it's quite far away still. Uh, if you look at the time. I think it will take us 41 minutes. Number 334 Alpha Whiskey, 
Atlantis, center right our contact, uh, turn right heading 180, vector three or five, comment name 12. So let me lean this out a bit, in the mixture right just a bit. 858 is the peak, let me stick to 830. Until now, I'm still not 100% sure on how I lean the mixture properly during climb. Like, what would be your indication? I always go to peak, I look for the peak, and I go a little bit richer. But going to the peak is, I guess, not very healthy for the engine, doing that multiple times. So, in real life, I'm not sure what is the ideal way of doing it. <clears throat> but yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll learn. So, and if you guys have tips for me, as always, I'm all ears. Just uh, be gentle about it, okay? But you guys have been amazing so far. Thank you for all the comments, the suggestions, the feedback, and the, the well wishes. And uh, yeah, we, we can do this together. There we are. Beautiful. So I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit of staying in VATSIM regardless if it's uh, a visual flight, an IFR flight and um, just you know, getting into the habit of communicating really simulating as much as possible so as possible to real life Oh, and we're, we're in our close cruising altitude now so I'm still in the very beginning of that journey but I'm hoping that it Planet, picks up. Planet AC 2583, 3300, climbing 8000. So let's lean the mixture. 8482. So let's go around 820 degrees. That's the lean of peak. Left 280, direct Bob's in up to 280, AC 2583. That should be okay. 8583, that's correction. Climbing 10, follow up so now our airspeed should pick up we can actually now close the cowl flaps that is mainly for the engine so it has some ventilation during the climb so it doesn't overheat look at that fuel flow 12.8 gallons per hour super economical because we're so high up in the air November 334 off with the term right Let's heading go and switch the tanks to the right one. Just balance it out a bit. One thing that I also wanted to share with you guys, maybe before I cut this. Can you repeat the information for American 2038, please? I am checking out a weather here, a weather plugin called Unreal Weather. Time in the simulator went backwards. Oh, come on, turn really? right heading uh, two or correction now one six, Yeah, it actually correction. disabled my turn right ah. heading one six, eight, eight, eight. Okay. Can I start you tracking? Uh, resume normal speed, climb maintain flight level two three zero. Okay, okay, flight there we go. Two, three, zero, American, oh that's cool. On air can actually resume flights. Because like in FS economy before, if you do something wrong, like if you teleport or I don't know, do something that doesn't like, it cancels the flight and you have to start from the beginning. Here on air, it detects that you did something it doesn't like, it stops, and then you can resume it as long as you are in the same area. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but here in the drop down, there is unreal weather. I use that every now and then because as you guys might know the live weather the default live weather doesn't always have the accurate numbers and oftentimes if you compare what you see outside the weather outside like the weather here in the sim versus the metar if you have access to any of the metars online like look in just google the ikea code of the airport and then the metar I'm sure you'll get something. Or if you use little nav map and go and check NOAA and all that stuff, you'll find that the meters almost never match. And sometimes it's very far off. So that's going to be very challenging. So in that those cases where I really want accuracy, especially when doing IFR flights, 
and you want to have dependable meters. You want to have a meter American that reflects really right the airport. That Unreal Weather is going to be to perfect. The only reason I'm not using it right now is it still is not very polished on the transitions. Like when it changes the weather from one meter to the other, the clouds with the way they transition is a bit artificial. You'll see the clouds changing frame by frame. So that part is still being optimized by the developer. But aside from that, it's free. It's everything else is super accurate. It's just the transitions that's missing for me. So when that when when they, when they find a way how to make that work, I will switch to that from live weather, I think. Because it is super accurate and perfect for IFR. For VFR, I think default live weather is more than enough. You get something that is closely resembling real life and uh, in the ballpark figure and you, you fly with what you get. Right. But yeah, from here it's going to be a chill time. I'll be relaxing here. I'll be listening in on the radio in case they contact me. Normally, if you have flight following like this, they will just um, probably contact me if there's traffic. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure how traffic works here in flights in 2020. If I can see other planes in Vatsim, I should, but I I have not been able to yet. Like I don't see them physically outside in the window. I don't see them in the radar. So if you guys have more info on that, let me know. Okay. Anyway, we are coming close to Asheville Regional here, our home base. Probably it's that one that one yeah we are pretty high up though so it's not very visible i should have probably lowered my altitude i'll probably do that we'll uh, sacrifice a bit of um, fuel economy but we will get nicer views so before i cut maybe let's do that i can i can find so many ways to extend this video guys so no problems with the length <laughs> if you want it shorter that's going to be the problem but if you want it longer, I can make ways. So if I look here, actually I have so many tools here. If you look at little nav map, when you file your, when you create your flight plan here, mark all the waypoints, the airports, it gives you that vertical elevation profile. And then it gets online the elevation for the exact flight plan. You can see as I hover over the, the flight plan here, you can see that cyan circle in the map see over here that's where it's pointing to and there you can see the mountains what is the safe elevation so it's saying this red line right here where my mouse is 5,000 feet based on this flight plan that I did 5,000 will get me to where I want to go safely and above any vertical restrictions probably like a thousand feet or 2,000 feet above the maximum height that's what it's saying so I can, I should be able to safely descend to 5,500 and it shouldn't be a problem. Um, we'll see if we can work, make that work. Let me try and compose myself because I think for altitude changes we'll have to, we don't have to get, we don't have to get approval from ATC but we have to tell them that we are descending. So let me set it up here first. Let's see how that works. Center Bonanza 361 Charlie Lima. Uh, we're descending 5,500 feet. That's okay. Descending 5,500 361 Charlie Lima. Thank you. American okay. 2038 Good. climate same level 340. Not sure what the exact process is there, what the exact phraseology is, but the important thing is we understood each other and uh, I clarified that before I did anything. I think that's the important thing and you guys have been pointing Atlanta that out Center, to me Alaska as well. Alright, so let's Alaska pull back on the throttle here so we don't overspeed. There we go. I'll also change the altitude in little nav map. So I know a lot of you guys are requesting for um, a little nav map tutorial. Contact, five, five miles, Unfortunately, I'm not sure where to start there. 
because it is so comprehensive there are so many topics to cover there like what aspect okay, in little nav map uh, flight the planning the navigating the windows so i'm not sure where to start the only thing i can recommend right now is really trying it out for yourself downloading it i have the links in the mods list as always and then try and give it time if it doesn't make sense in the beginning don't hate on it yet don't give up on it yet just leave it come back the next day and try and try until you get how it works you know and at, right, even now until now i'm still discovering new features in it and i've been using it for months i've been using it since since explain day so since last year when i started with flight sim when i started getting into flight simulation so yeah until now i'm still learning new features in it so it, it's amazing i cannot recommend it enough so little nav map Atlanta i would say Center, is the Delta 1553 flight for flight from the south inbound for Atlanta. and i don't think that's any exaggeration at all Delta 1553 Atlanta Center, uh, squawk mode Charlie. Nashville should be on our zero. left. 3020 zero, zero in the box for Delta 1553. Is it? Squawk 2066. Really? 2066 in the box. Sorry about that, sir. Okay. That is the closest thing to an airport that I recognize, but it doesn't look very similar to anything that I. Expect. Level 320 for Delta 50. Okay, but Delta 50, if I look at the map contact, here, we are staying miles, away Delta from Delta. the airspace. The class, I think this is Charlie, airspace of Asheville. So we should be American safe there. Because even if you have flight following, from what I've read, it doesn't, doesn't mean you can go to anywhere. VFR ha ATC has uh, visibility on where you Delta are going, 1553 where you are. Request descent via the SIP to arrival. But it doesn't mean you can go anywhere Delta you want. Delta 1553, descend via the SIP arrival, and I'll turn to the SIP to arrival. So we still descend have to avoid to those controlled airspaces. Unless we explicitly ask for them. What is this lake? Very nice looking. <clears throat> That's actually where we're going directly. The, the waypoint, Tuxdo, is right on that lake right there. So what we can do here, instead of the VFR sectional, if you want to do some sightseeing, so we can change this. So if you look here, and I'll show you. Uh, I told you guys I can extend this episode like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so many things I can talk about. Um, hopefully I'm not boring you. But uh, if, you, if you are bored, feel free to jump Please using the timestamps. One thing I notice, I am not in a coordinated flight. You can look at my my PFD. The rudder is far away from the center, which is very weird. Okay, now it's correcting itself. Maybe it was the wind. Uh, this plane doesn't have your damper, so I guess I have to do that manually. Okay. No, but, yeah. Uh, 361 Charlie Lima confirmed uh, Kilo Hotel Kilo Yankee Okay, why did they ask? I guess because we're not going straight towards there so they might be asking about the the direction but we are basically staying away from the airspace so let me lean this again 790 is the peak so let's go around 770 right there should be good and there we are lean of peak 10.8 oh that's even more economical oh no that's because i am not in 25 inches of manifold pressure my bad let's lean that again i knew there was something wrong with the the EGT it was too low so 870 let's go 850 there you go Allegiant 938 turn left heading 270 alright should I have also told them about this Tuxdo thing mm, not so sure but uh, from what I know I don't need to 
tell them my entire flight plan so I can go like left and right, just general direction. But you guys correct me there, okay? Maybe I should have told them about Toxto. That's my bad, if ever. So anyway, going back here, the default, well, the default is actually an open street map, map like this, I think, when you first load up little nav map. But with the link in the mods list, you can actually download additional maps. There are directions there where to put those files in and close the, 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 the app, open it again, and you should get more options in here. And here are the new ones. The, I think these are the ones with the asterisk. So you can have like Google Maps, Default, uh, Satellite, Terrain, and then you have the VFR no, the section in here as well. So what we wanted to look at a while ago was this one. That was the North Saluda Reservoir. Interesting. Maybe you guys know more about that. Yeah, let me move back to the VFR sectionals here. Yeah, okay, this time I really let you guys go. So I will keep on cruising here and I'll bring you back when we're closer, okay? Enjoy and catch you in a bit. Welcome back, guys. Much closer now to our destination. Should be 10 minutes away. Just been given some... Uh, I've been given a, a runway to expect for our airport in Hickory Regional. Let me show you the chart. They told me to expect... Ooh, Jabra Direct. <laughs> they told me to expect runway 6. Straight in runway 6. And uh, that's going to be a pretty straightforward thing because we are actually headed almost that same trajectory. Heading 062 and the runway heading 063. So yeah, perfect. I think this is as straight as it can get. <laughs> so no complaints there, although I guess the pressure for a proper landing is quite uh, um, more intense. Yeah, I've been chilling here. I've been enjoying the radio frequencies, the chatter, and I've been uh, yeah, they're getting exposed, getting more experience. I love it. The possibilities that VATSIM unlocks. And yeah, I think once you get used to it, I'm not quite there yet, but I can definitely feel it. I'm not as nervous anymore. I don't feel like the controllers are going to bite my head off any second. Um, November 361, Charlie Wayne, the maintain 4,500. The Senate maintain 4,500, 361, Charlie Lima. Okay. Let's go VS down. Let's do it at 1,000 feet per minute. Pull back on the throttle so we don't go too fast. I see the... Delta 305. Not sure radar. if that's it. Radar contact. So yeah, normally, depending on the airport you would land in, you would be able to, for example, when I have visibility of the runway, I can report runway in sight or report airway, or airport in sight. And then if it's like an uncontrolled airport, which is what we did last time, um, I can say canceling IFR. I can request cancellation of IFR. So they don't have to mind me anymore and I can land on my own. But since this time, it's going to be this airport supposedly should have ground, tower, clearance delivery of the works. So uh, yeah, center will be acting as all of those because then we don't have the actual frequencies in here. So I think they'll guide us along, vector us in, provide instructions for landing, clearance, and then tax instructions once you go down. We'll try how it works. Now I'm looking here because they will ask us where we want to go once we land. Um, there seems to be only one FBO here. And that FBO is over on this side, on the northern side of the airport. So I'm expecting if it runway 6, Number Pro 344 off the whiskey contact line approach. We'll probably turn left at uh, Bravo. 25 Go straight and then turn whiskey. right towards the FBO. Probably. AC 2583, are you still at Atlanta Center? 
Elevation of the runway is 1,156. So let me start slowing down here. Sure, mixture of American 303 depart heels heading to Okay, do I have the runway in sight? Delta the, 1660 there is something blinking in the horizon that is the runway for sure because I am headed straight in there. Now we are 16 miles away. Airport inside 361 Charlie Lima. No, we're 361 Charlie Lima, make straight in runway 6. Straight in runway 6, 361 Charlie Lima. Good. American uh, 303. Uh, I was expecting right, initially they'll right. ask me to like join downwind runway 24, so we'll be like flying in parallel to the runway but over here on its right and then we'll uh, join the pattern and we'll make a U-turn to land runway 24 but yeah this is much easier just land runway 6 straight in and go straight to where to that is definitely much simpler now on the off chance that they do have like tower and ground coming online at the last minute and asking me to switch there I Delta have also plugged your, in. Uh, destination is Charlotte. I've also plugged in the uh, Delta frequency. Like your, uh, flight plan that I have for you is a routing from Atlanta to Orlando. There's the runway. Just keep on going. American 303 is going to maintain 4,000. Now, if we can do this, let's say, select an approach, we can probably get some additional guidance here, even though we'll be cleared, we're cleared for uh, the, the straight in approach. Go for R now 6. Um, let me go to heading mode here first, so we don't get, we don't turn. 063 there. And then this time I'll load it in. Mm, I'm, I'm quite scared about this, but let's try. Yeah, that's pretty off. American 303, uh, Charlotte is at your 10 o'clock and 1 7 miles from here. Yeah, There's the runway. American 303, uh, turn left heading to. Yeah, that won't work. 1 0, Curtis Approach, 1 1 8 Right, that's fine. We'll, we'll work on this on our own. That was the wrong move. It's dead. What we can do is just go direct, maybe. Activate. Clear to land runway 6, 361 Charlie Lima. Turn off autopilot here, have some fun. Right, let me make sure. Gas, gums checklist. Gas, right tank is the fullest. Undercarriage, not yet. So let's slow down. We're a bit high here, I think. Don't have papi lights or anything, so we're going to guesstimate this. Now, landing gear should be 154 knots, I think, so we'll. I'm just going lower, way lower, so I can, I'm sure, absolutely sure that I'm not going to go beyond any restrictions. Flaps are set for approach. Landing gear. Come on. Okay, it works. Three greens. That actually happened to me, that same issue we had the first time, guys. When the landing gear wouldn't extend fully, it happened to me again the other day. So I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong. Right, so we are within the yeah, Delta Ranger Five. I got it. Thank you. The flap speed extension, the safe uh, speed for flaps extension for full flaps. So let's do that. 
And now let's do our checklist. So gumps, gas, set to the fullest tank, undercarriage, that's the landing gear, mixture, full, which is probably not wise for this simulator. It has a bit of a bug with full mixture. Um, hmm. Gumps, propeller, full, and switches, the lights, don't forget them otherwise. On air will not like us very much. Okay, and now let's do a proper approach here. Not too steep, not too steep. Winds are favoring actually. Yeah, runway 6 is perfect for this. The meter should be okay. Yeah, it's 6 8 on a center retail transport squawk 2013. Looking good. Let's keep that. 80 knots is the approach speed here. So I actually should be able to pull back on the throttle a bit. Why do I, why do I feel like I'm crabbing a bit? One second. Oh, there we go. That's more like it. I was actually stepping on my right rudder pedal just a bit there. That's one of the problems I noticed with my rudder pedals. They're a bit... Um, at some point, you forget you're stepping on them because your your foot has grown that accustomed to like adjusting for that right rudder when you're taking off. Sometimes I actually forget to lead, to like pull it back; <laughs> just sticks there. <laughs> so yeah, that's probably what happened. All right, the winds are changing, but it's like one knot wind. I'm looking at that wind. Zero degrees Delta at one knot. Zero five. That flight plan's actually for the So basically, no winds calm, like ATC said. So let's do a proper approach here now. I am approaching a bit too fast here. Not three zero five. We do have papi lights here. Are you going to be on the banker arrival? Do you call this papi lights if it's only two? Normally, papi lights are like four sets, right? Do you call this differently? This is what you call like vasi lights or something? Like when you only have two sets then you would need one white one red well technically i guess there are four of them still but you get my point so 79 knots is the ideal approach speed for this plane I just remembered not 80. we got that nice landing last time because of that approach i think i am a bit high though so let's descend just a bit more until we get that one red in the those lights. Let's see, there you go. That's the one I want. Bring it back up. Pitch for 79. And then that should be good. Okay. Um, one second. Uh, we should be set here. Alright, that looks great. Everything is good. Let me do this thing. There you go, okay. Alright. Flare. And just dial it down. Oh, I'll take that. Landing time 79 low. knots is the magic number. Landed at Kilo Hotel Kilo Yankee. That's Hickory perfect. Atlanta Center American 1862 is with you. Climbing out of 2,600 for 8,000. Exit here. Here. Man, I got Atlanta everything. There you go, that's perfect. Alright. So, one second, let me go through here and we'll stop and we'll adjust, one second, huh? Alright, 